right, it's Christmas Eve, and these people back here would like to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! So if you didn't get to come tonight, we'll put that at the beginning, and you can pretend you were here, whether you're in the hospital, whether you're far away. And to my friends in Germany who watch every week, I don't know how to say Merry Christmas in German. That's all you get, so. Well, Merry Christmas. We'll try it one more time for a few of you that uh, slept through that part. All right, Merry Christmas. I was a little worried. It's a little dark out there, and some of my friends, like Carrie, are here, and he might use this opportunity just to fade out on us, so I just want to make sure everybody was up, so I just wanted to tell you Merry Christmas. I'm glad you're here tonight. You know, we love the Christmas Carol. We love the story of Scrooge, and here's what I love about it, okay? The story of Scrooge is the idea that, you know, here one day, the guy was totally selfish and self-centered. He didn't care about anybody but himself. Life was negative. All he saw was what was wrong with the world, and he wakes up one day later. Now, granted, he's got a pretty serious uh, vision or dream or visit or whatever you want to call it from three ghosts. But he wakes up the next day, and what happens? He sees life totally differently. And here's the deal. The world around him had not changed at all, but he had changed. And so tonight we're going to look at part of the story in Luke chapter 2. And we're going to focus on Mary and one of her thoughts, one of the things that happened um, with Mary. And in Protestant churches, a lot of times we don't talk about Mary a whole lot. Those of you who grew up Catholic, you talk about Mary an awful lot. And, uh, but, but as Protestants, they've kind of said, well, we don't want to worship her, so we're not going to talk about her at all. Listen, Mary was highly favored by God. Mary was an incredible woman, and you can learn, you and I both can learn, some incredible truths from how she saw what happened to her. So we're going to look at the story. I'm going to point out a few things to you, and then we're going to just put one verse up in a few minutes just to, to kind of pull everything together. And so, and tonight our focus is let there be light. And I don't know if you've ever been in the dark and not been able to see. Um, I have. <laughs> I used to go camping with the Boy Scouts. Some of the most miserable days of my life were camping with the Boy Scouts. For, now, not for me, my, but for my son was in Boy Scouts and, uh, and uh, getting up in the middle of the night. And I remember one night, you know, getting up and the flashlight didn't work. And you stumble and you trip and you hit stuff and you stub your toe. And then somebody comes alongside of you with a flashlight. And it's just awesome. So I've been there. So Luke chapter 2 says this. We're going to read from the New Century Version. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read a piece of it. So here you go. At that time, Augustus Caesar sent an order that all the people in the countries under Roman rule must list their names in a register. Oh. Yeah. This was the first registration. It was taken while... I know I said the same thing. While Quirinius... You have no idea how appropriate that sound was. Why Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to their own towns to be registered. By the way, this was all to pay taxes. So, so you all should do that noise. We all should go, uh, okay? So you have to pay taxes. Okay, we're going to try it again like, like you're getting ready to pay taxes, okay? Uh, you have to pay taxes. Uh, much better. And even a boo in there. That was nice, okay? So Joseph left Nazareth, okay, where his work was, where everything was, where probably Mary's family was, a town in Galilee, and went to the town in Bethlehem in Judea, known as the town of David. Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Joseph registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was now pregnant. Scandalous. That's not the Bible. I just said it. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have the baby, and she gave birth to her first son because there were no rooms left in the inn. She wrapped the baby with pieces of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough. That's what a manger is. Then we have the story of the shepherds, and the shepherds, then in verse 16, it says, The shepherds went quickly and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby who was lying in a feeding trough. When they had seen him, they told what the angels had said about this child. And everyone was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And here's the key verse, verse 19. We're going to put it on the screen so you will never forget it. But Mary treasured these things and continued to think about them. Now listen. 
Mary treasured. That, that word treasure is the idea of to keep on keeping. The idea of, of uh, thinking about them is the idea of picking up and looking at it, picking up and putting down. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So here's what I want to do tonight, and I'm going to tell you why I did this message. I'm going to talk about Mary and what she did, and I'm going to talk about how you and I do the same thing. But first I want to tell you why this message is tonight. The other night there was a rocket, an incredible Space SpaceX rocket that went off. I took my mom, we went, we had a perfect parking space on US-1. We could see across the water as the rocket, we could see the initial spark, well not spark, but we could see the initial, the rocket begin, and we could see that light as the rocket took off. We watched it, it was incredible, we could hear it, we could see it, it was a beautiful night, it was reflecting off the water, there were people all along US-1 watching this rocket, and the rocket took off, and I knew that this was a new rocket, and they were going to be able to land the booster. But I didn't know that you would be able to see this. So I looked over at mom, I said, you know what? You probably won't be able to see it, let's go home. Oh, no. oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> I said that later, couldn't you have been there with me? But anyway, so, so I, said, uh, I said, let's go. So we drove home, I live very close to US-1 up in that area, and so uh, we drove home, we pulled in the driveway, get in the house, I hear what sounds like an explosion, so I did what all Americans do, I ran outside to see what blew up. Well, nothing blew up. I didn't see anything. That was the sound of that rocket coming back in, and I was just now hearing the sonic boom. So I went thinking that something had gone wrong, and I turned on the TV, and the local news says, you, if you weren't here to see the rocket land, you really missed it. <laughs> we were on US-1. Listen, he said, we're, we're set up here on US-1, and people were cheering and hollering and screaming. It was like the old days. It was incredible. You should have been here. <laughs> Let's see a replay. <laughs> Let's watch it landing first. That's more important. <laughs> For the next hour, I just watched. <laughs> now, I saw that part. She missed that part. <laughs> My friend started posting on Facebook, you should have been there! The landing was so incredible, it was like the 70s when they were doing rocket launches. You could see it? Sin. Yeah, it was incredible, did you see it? Heard it. Saw it take off. Why didn't you see it land? I didn't know I could see it land. We went home. So I went to bed totally and completely disappointed, right? It was like I had woken up, I'd seen something, you know, and then missed like the whole thing. So the next day I woke up and I was praying about this, so it's just kind of like, all right, God, I'm a whip. What's the deal, you know? And as I was praying, it was like God showed up at my house. Now, obviously, there was no, you know, but, but here's what happened. So I'm praying, and here's what I realized. You ready? I just saw the most incredible thing on earth. One of the most incredible things. One, one. I saw a rocket launch a satellite into space. From right around in my neighborhood. I heard it go off. I heard it land. I saw something that only a few thousand people got to witness in person. And yet I was disappointed. And I realized this. You ready? 
This is exactly what we all do. We have a great life. We've been blessed by God. We have tons of blessings. God does great things for us. And then one thing we don't like happens. And what do we focus on? We, you know, Debbie Downer. We all become Debbie. Oh, well, I miss the landing. And of course the news doesn't help. Once in a lifetime. Nobody else will get to see it again. <laughs> But I saw one of the most awesome things in the world, and yet I was disappointed. Why? Because I was focused on what didn't go right. Do you ever think about this? Do you realize that Mary could have been disappointed? What? How? How could I be disappointed? I just saw a rocket. Let me tell you why. First of all, her vision was destroyed. What? Do you really think that her vision was, I really want to get away from my family, go to my in-laws' neighborhood, have them not welcome me, and have a baby in a stable? That's my vision. Now, that would be pretty disappointing for most of us. If you're pregnant, and you picked out a hospital, and you got there, and they said, I'm sorry, we don't have room, but we've got a shack out back. I mean, we would be disappointed if they said, but the Ramada next door, right? <laughs> but imagine if they said, no, 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 well, you can't do that. Just listen, where they keep the lawn tools, where they keep the John Deere tractor, that's where you're going to have the baby. Be a little disappointed. Her vision had to be destroyed. Number two, she was uncomfortable. Let me say very simply, under, uncomfortable is an understatement. Any woman who's had a baby knows that having a baby is not uncomfortable. <laughs> I've had a kidney stone, and when they came into me, they said, what level of pain are you in? One through ten. I said, nine. And the lady said, nine? You look like it's horrible. I said, well, I heard a breaking a femur is the worst, and I don't want those femur people mad at me, so I'm just going to say nine, but I can't imagine anything worse. Now, if she had come in when I had a kidney stone and said, how are you doing? I would not have said, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Mary had to travel at nine months pregnant. We've got some women here, or a woman here that's nine months pregnant. I asked her, what do you think about that? <laughs> no public bathrooms back then either, kids. Just remember that part of the story. Nice. And donkey travel. <laughs> uncomfortable. So vision destroyed, uncomfortable, and finally she was rejected. She had no place to stay. The family wouldn't even take her in. The innkeeper said, no more room. Now, think about what the innkeeper missed out on. There's a story about a preschool kid with Down syndrome who got to be in the school play, and he got to be the innkeeper, and he had one line. And his one line was, no room in the inn. No room in the inn. So he practiced over and over, no room in the inn. And his parents were so nervous, they made him his little costume, and it came night for the time for the play, and they were so nervous, and he got up, and in came little preschool Mary and Joseph, and they asked the innkeeper, can we stay here for the night? And he got his line, he nailed it. He said, no room in the inn. And little Mary and Joseph looked dejected, they started wandering off, and as they started wandering off, the little boy with Down syndrome looked over and said, wait, 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 you can have my room! Now listen, on this side of things, it's easy to say, why didn't the innkeeper notice? But he didn't. He didn't. And yet, she was rejected. She was uncomfortable. She had her vision destroyed of, I'm sure, what she thought would be a perfect birth. She was considered highly, angels showed up and said, you're highly favored. Do you think any of those three things made it in the highly favored list? I'm sure Joseph was the same way, like, okay, i got to go pay taxes? This is part of the plan? Our plan and God's plan are very different, but can I tell you, we get disappointed and we do the same three things. Just like Mary could have gotten disappointed over her vision being destroyed, we get disappointed when we have life changes. We get visit, uh, disappointed, it, it, uh, destroyed, our vision gets destroyed when we lose a loved one. When we go through a divorce, when we have strained relationships, when difficulty happens, we can lose vision. Number two, we can become uncomfortable. That might be an understatement. 
Just like Mary was uncomfortable, we can become uncomfortable. We can focus on the discomfort when we lose our jobs, when finances are tight, when we end up in the hospital, when we're sick. Even if we have a painful past, maybe we're embarrassed of it, or maybe we're carrying around the baggage from it. It's uncomfortable, and we can focus on that. You ever focus on something that happened to you weeks or months and years ago? Can I tell you something about that? No matter how many times you replay the tape, no matter how many times you rewind and play it again, it's still going to hurt. No matter how many times you go back and think in your head you're going to fix it or you could have done something different, every time you replay it, you can't fix it. Number three, we feel rejected. We all feel left out. Did you know? You ready for this? You ready for this? Everybody feels lonely sometimes. When we feel lonely, we feel like we're the only ones. I'm the only one that feels lonely. Oh. Right? And we have a pity party and we invite ourselves. And we don't even show up. Right? <laughs> and we feel lonely. We feel rejected. People hurt us. By the way, sometimes, many times, most of the time, people hurt you on accident. Did you know that? Most of the times you're going to get hurt in life on accident. But there are people who will hurt you on purpose. There are people who will try to rip you off and try to hurt you and try to control you and try to manipulate you, and they will hurt you on purpose. Once again, you can replay the tape and you can focus on that rejection. You can focus on what that person did, but that won't help you overcome it. So what do we do, Eric? You told us what Mary could have focused on. She obviously did it, but I do. So what do we do? Let me tell you what Mary did. Here it is. Mary treasured. That word treasure is this idea of keep on keeping something. Do you have anything that you treasure that you hang on to? Maybe your spouse has said, you need to get rid of that. You said, but I've had this stuffed animal since I was little. But I've had this tool that I use. Now this doesn't look like much to you. It's just a little black strip to you. About an inch and a half long. But this to me is a treasure. When I was 18 years of age, I gave my dad a G-Shock watch. Now, my dad was hard on He went through watches. He broke watches. He could not hardly wear a watch to work because he'd break it. He was a contractor, but he also laid block. And I gave him this watch as a present, and all I have left of it is this little piece of band. But this little piece of band still has concrete on it from where he laid block. And so to me, this is a treasure. I hang on to it. I keep on keeping. You know what Mary did? She kept on keeping. Listen, if you want to quit focusing on what's wrong, if you want to quit focusing on how your vision was destroyed, if you want to quit focusing on how you're uncomfortable and how you've been rejected, begin treasuring what's important. Begin treasuring what's important. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world. That's you. You put your name in that verse and say, God so loved Eric. God so loved Jim. God so loved Carrie. God so loved Mary Ann. God so loved me. That he gave his one and only son. That's what we celebrate at Christmas time. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes, that's whoever puts their faith in him, won't perish. Why? Because he took our sins, but they'll have eternal life. If you're here tonight, you can give your life to Jesus Christ. Right now, you can cry out to him and say, Jesus, I pre please forgive me my sins. I want to surrender my life to you. I know you died for me and rose again. I want to give you my life. That's what it means to be a Christian. John 3, 16. Do you treasure that? Do you treasure God's love for you? You know there's only two commands, love God and love people. Do you treasure the people around you? The second thing she did in this verse is that she continued to think about them. In some versions it says, and she pondered them. Literally, what that word means is, do you remember the commercial with the big meathead guy? And he says, what are you doing? He says, I pick things up and I put them down. I pick things up and I put them down. Are you lifting weights? I pick things up and I put them down. You see that come up? I pick things up and I put right and you get it with things up. That's what it means to ponder. To ponder means to take something and roll it over and over. And too many of us are taking bad memories and bad circumstance and a rocket not landing and I didn't watch it. 
I missed that one part. I got 400 awesome things in my review at my job, but I did one thing wrong, and all I can think about is the one thing I did wrong. I've got 5,000 billion successes in my life. I had this one failure, and all I can think about is how I failed, and how I'm broken, and how I'm messed up, and how I don't have it together. Can I tell you, no matter how broken you are, you are welcome at the manger. You are welcome at the cross, and you are welcome to come home to see Jesus because he loves you, and he welcomes the broken. He wants you not only to treasure, but he wants you to ponder. Think about what matters. What matters? First of all, eternity. John 3, 6. If you believe in Him, you can have eternal life. But can I tell you what else? Too many of us get focused on things that don't matter today. And we miss today because we're thinking or worried about tomorrow. Some of you have been so busy this week that you're getting stuff for people for Christmas. And you're yelling at the people you're buying the things for. <laughs> Some of you got in a fight on the way to Christmas Eve service. Does that seem weird? You can't sit down right. Oh, he's a pastor. Hey. Yes. Some of you have a perfect Christmas card. You've posted it on Facebook. And five seconds before the picture, you kids get over there right now. And you just smile. And you look. <laughs> but you don't ponder what really matters. What matters for eternity. And what matters next year. And what matters ten years from now. Can I tell you something? If you get everything wrong tomorrow, you buy every wrong gift. You, you, you know, you have, you have a spouse who does not even like to go outside and you buy them uh, uh, an outdoor uh, barbecue grill and suntan lotion, okay? And, and they go, what did you do that for? If you get all that wrong and yet you take time to focus attention on them, you take time to listen, you take time to care, you take time to go out of your way, you do something that matters. But too often, we're focused on something that doesn't make a difference. We're focused on a football game. We're focused on the busyness of work. We're focused on the busyness of life. We're focused on our to-do list. We're focused on trying to get from here to there. And we don't take time to do the two most important things. Love God and love people. Life is not perfect. You're going to miss the end of a rocket launch. But you saw the beginning. Not very many people saw the beginning. Eric, you saw the beginning. I know I'm trying to remember. Every time one of you come up to me and say, did you see it? No, but I saw the beginning. What are we going to focus on? What are we going to go towards? Are we going to love God and look for what matters in eternity? Are we going to live for now and neglect what really matters? Listen. There's a story about a dad, and I, and I love this story, but it's way too true for so many of us dads and moms. A story about a dad who had his office at the house, and his little boy kept coming in the room and saying, Hey, hey dad, can you play? And the dad said, Hey, I'm on the phone. Get out of here. I'm busy. I'm trying to earn money, and this is how I make a living, and these people pay me. About an hour later, the kid came back. Hey, dad, do you have time to play? Hey, I'm busy. I've got things to do. These people are paying me. My time is precious. Third time, about an hour later, the kid comes in. He's got his piggy bank with him. Knocks on the door and he says, Dad, I know you're busy. Can I pay for some of your time? Can I tell you something? Most of your kids don't want to pay for it. Most of the people that are in your life don't want to pay for it. But they want to know that you love them and your time is precious and it's valuable. And as much as somebody might pay you, they will fire you tomorrow. But you can't fire your family. So love them. So tomorrow in the middle of the busyness, in the middle of the hectic and how you feel, take a moment just to get still and love God. And tell him thank you for what he's done. But also take time to get still and love the people around you. And quit thinking about you. And quit thinking about your problem and your mistake and your failure. And how you ended up in a manger. Oh, that wasn't you, was it? How you ended up traveling nine months? No, that wasn't you either. How you had to pay taxes. Well, that happened. And instead of focusing on the blessings you have. And if you're single, don't say to me, oh, but Eric, I got nobody. I ain't got nobody. There might not be anybody in your house. There might not be anybody in your apartment. But there's somebody who needs your love and needs you to care about them. And I encourage you tomorrow on day of all days on Christmas Day to go out of your way to call somebody and say, how you doing? Maybe even to do this new thing I've heard about, you go outside. 
and you get in your car and you drive to, like other people live in houses too. And you drive there and you knock on the door and you say, am I bothering you? And they pretend and say no. And you say, I'll come back in a few minutes when you can clean the bathroom. I'll be right back, right? Because they're running around. Or you call and you say, hey, hey, um, I got cookies. Can I bring you some? Hey, I got some left over this. Can I bring you some? And just go out of your way to call somebody or let them know you love them or send them a text or send them a Facebook note. or I don't care what you do, but don't just think about you. Think about what matters. What's going to matter next year about tomorrow? What's going to matter next year about tonight? I'm glad you're here because you know what? You'll remember being here. You'll know, probably won't remember what I said, but you'll remember being here. You'll remember something dumb I said, probably. <laughs> you know he didn't see that rocket land. Do you remember that? <laughs> hey, I went to my 20-year reunion. You know what they came up and said to me? I've got to tell you this. In junior high, this has nothing to do with the message. In junior high, in junior high, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I dropped cymbals during a concert. You know what the kids say to me when they go to me? Hey, I remember you dropping the cymbals. First thing, first thing. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. Don't focus on everything you've done wrong, everything you've messed up, all your discomfort, all your lack of vision, all the ways you've been rejected. Instead, think what's going to matter and begin to say, God, help me to be that person. Thank you for sending your son. Thanks for being here tonight. If you need to give your life to Jesus, email me, text me, call me, come see me after the service. I'll be here. I know you're busy. Take time to do what matters. If you're here tonight and you've only been thinking about yourself, hey, it's time to ponder and treasure. And treasure and ponder. And pick things up and put them down. And keep doing it until you think of what's right and quit rewinding the old tape and do what's right. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you're the light of the world. And Father, in the middle of darkness, literal darkness, you showed up to shepherds. And Father, in the middle of darkness, spiritual darkness, you showed up in Bethlehem in a manger. And Father, in the middle of spiritual darkness, you showed up in my life when I was pretending I was religious and I was coming to church and I was doing spiritual things. You showed up and said, Eric, it's just pretend. Give your life to me. And Father, your light came into my life and you changed me. And Father, I know there's others you've done that. And Father, some of us have forgotten so, Lord, I pray even now you'd remind us of what really matters. Father, that we could surrender our hearts and lives to you, that we could get still and know that silent night. And, Father, if we light these candles, that it would be a, an example of what's happening in our hearts, that you are revealing the truth about us and you're reminding us of what really matters in eternity. Lord, for somebody watching even in Germany or overseas or watching online in Hawaii or somewhere else, Father, I pray that even tonight or today, whenever they watch this, that they would know your love. Father, even in the middle of their depression, they would know your love for them. Father, thank you for your gift of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to dim our lights and we're going to light our candles in just a moment. We're going to take just a moment to be reflective. Would you just be reflective for just a moment?